like there's a textbook about it, is there? Like, what to do when your daughter gets abducted. It's funny, we were having such a good time, just like, with our friends and their kids, and I think because it was a group of us, you just, you're into each other, do you know what I mean? You kind of, your interactions with each other, whereas maybe if it had just been me and Jerry and the kids, um, you know, you probably spend a bit more time looking around, you know. I mean, we're all new to this, it's awful, and you know, it's horrible for anyone to have to go through, and we're just doing what we think's best, and we don't know, we don't know if we're, what we're doing's right, you know. There are many inconsistencies in what the group who were having dinner with the McCanns, the so-called Tappers Nine, have said in their witness statements. This is what the McCanns say happened that night. There's a party of nine. It's coming towards the end of their holiday and most people are drinking. All the couples have children in the apartments. They say they took turns to check up on them. We all knew what we had to do, what we were doing. And you know, it worked, it was a system we had going and it just seemed totally right, you know. The McCanns quickly grew impatient at the police response. It seemed bloody slow at the time, you know, and um, I don't know, I mean again you've got to put it into perspective, you know, it's a, it's a quiet sleepy place, certainly at that time of year. Um, there's no local police, you know, so they have to come from the nearest town. The local police come out. Um, you've got to remember we had the language barrier as well. John Corner is a film producer. He's also godfather to the McCann twins. The McCanns say because he's a friend, he's invited to make a film for the launch of a YouTube channel for missing children. And on August the 1st, he arrives on the Algarve. When John Corner arrives at the villa, Kate tells him about Jerry taking his sister and brother-in-law to the airport. Jerry took them, yeah, he's a bit crumbly, I think. I think he was all right, and then he said, right, I'm going to go now, and then he, he lost her. And I got a, got a text from Shish, and it said, uh, nearly choked on me full English because of that tiny tears husband of yours, you know. Oh, oh. <laughs> but, yeah. And, um, Is he big brother or little brother? Little brother, yeah, Jerry's the youngest, yeah. He's the youngest, isn't yeah. he? Yeah. Yeah. Um, because the media see Jerry as this kind of uh, uh, emotionless warrior, and um, he's not really, is he? No, he's not. I mean, it's really harsh to say that because, I mean, you know, he's he's. Jerry is, he's always been a very focused person, he's enthusiastic, he's focused and he's incredibly positive, which is great for me to be honest. Um, and he's obviously used to speaking in public to say, not dealing with media, but speaking in public, so he's able to go on and do that and throw himself into it, you know, and I think that's what people see and, you know, people say, oh, um, how can you do that? Or how can you stand there and do that when your daughter's been taken and everything? And I mean, I mean, I've been like that before, you know, and there's been other cases of kids that have been taken or killed or whatever, and you think to yourself, how does anyone cope with that? How could you, how could you get through another day? And then you throw it back to yourself and think, how did I get up this morning? How did I get a shower? How did I get my breakfast? And something obviously gets you through it, apart from the first few days, which you have total sort of physical shutdown, but um, something gets you through it, do you know what I mean? And I think until you're in that situation, you just you just can't say. You know, he has his lows as well, you know, for sure. And in fact, probably Jerry's lowest points were often on a Saturday because we had like a family day. We just say, right, we'll try and put the work on hold as much as you can. Um, and we'll do something with the with the twins, and then um, he often found that the hardest because we were having family time without Madeline. You know, it just didn't seem right. Because you're their friend, people might treat these um, pictures with some scepticism. Mm. What difference do you think it made that you were their friend? Um, were you, for example, guiding them off camera? Not at all. I was no, I was never guiding them off camera, and then. Um, it's not that kind of relationship with Kate and Jerry. I just let the cameras run and we burnt a lot of tape. Just just let the cameras run. There'll be plenty of people who won't buy that. This was their friend filming what they wanted seen. But their supporters would say they weren't then suspects. And if they were hiding an extraordinary secret, is it likely the couple would invite a camera team, however friendly, into their lives? 
On the day filming was due to start, the police arrive at the McCann Villa. As these pictures show, they would return. The Portuguese had rejected their request for the FBI to come in, but they did bring in a British forensic team with sniffer dogs. Forensic teams had found what were thought to be specks of blood in the McCann apartment. Those sniffer dogs had reportedly reacted to the scent of death in the McCann hire car and on Kate McCann's clothing. People were starting to think what had previously seemed unthinkable. Kate McCann talks to John Corner as all this is going on. We're just doing absolutely everything we can do, you know, uh, to help find Madeline. And the last thing we want is to look back and think we could have done more. Oh. They've been watching us over a master of days, I'm sure. Um, you know, they know, um, you know, they must have known, you know, that Jerry had just been into the apartment. And then, um, you're right, there was only a small window of opportunity, but... You know, I mean, there isn't a day that goes by that I'm not kind of thinking to myself, why did I think that was okay? You know, was I wrong in thinking that was okay? And, you know, I, know, I mean, all I, can, all I can say to myself is I know how much I love my children. I know I'm a responsible parent and I know that, you know, and I've just got to keep saying that to myself, really, you know, and it's not about us, you know. We were bobbing back and forward several times an hour to see the kids, so... You know, um, it's not about us. You know, I think that the problem is it's this predator, basically, who's uh, been watching us, which gives you the shivers anyway, and broken into the apartment and taken Madeline out of her bed.